everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, an epic 54,000 piece jigsaw puzzle from Graphica. If you haven't seen the other videos I've done in this series, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you watch at least the unboxing video just to get an overview of the jigsaw puzzle in its entirety. Now today we are going to be doing bag 19, which is section 5. One big, beautiful, large painting. It's from Peter Bruegel the Elder. We saw his work before in the sense of hearing that he did with Peter Paul Rubens. Also one big, large painting. And his son, Peter Bruegel the Younger, also did some paintings in this jigsaw puzzle. This is called the Tower of Babel. So as with the other videos, during the voiceover, I'll talk about Peter and I'll talk about the painting and the tower and whatever information I can find online so we can learn a bit about it. Now, what's really interesting is that this will complete another what I like to call column. So this is our panoramic poster of the entirety of the jigsaw puzzle. I've completed like one, two, three, four full columns of three puzzles each and right down the center now this will complete a fifth one because this is the top section right here. I've also done the four library um, bookshelf sections at the end of the jigsaw puzzle as well. So we are getting there. There's not many more to do. I think there's only two more large paintings on their own. This one will be the last section that we do. And that's going to be beautiful because it's bright and colorful. So what a wonderful note to finish this jigsaw puzzle on. And as for some of the other ones, there's two more along the floor sections. There's one that has four paintings and two more that have three paintings. And I just, there's so much more to learn and do, but we're getting there. I, I'm kind of always, every video I'm sure you hear me say, oh my goodness, we'll be done before we know it. We're getting there because I knew I could do it, but I'm just, I'm doing it. You know, putting yourself quite a big daunting task of 54,000 pieces can be a bit overwhelming. And I will admit, when I start each section, I do feel a bit overwhelmed, like, oh, a 2,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, am I going to be able to do this? It quickly passes, though, during the sorting, but I just want you to know, like, I'm no pro or expert here, I just like the jigsaw puzzle. And some of them do feel overwhelming and daunting. This was the last section that I just completed and filmed. It's on the table here because it's beautiful. But those beige background pieces were very overwhelming. When you're spending three and a half hours looking at various shades of beige, they all blend in together, you know? But I'm excited for this one because I do enjoy doing the single big painting ones. It feels very different. And there's a bit of, um, you know, tone in the top of the background of the wall here, a bit of what would you know the greeny kind of darker beigey colors and there's not so much of the single beige pieces so i'm looking forward to that i'm very familiar with this frame i think it'll be easy to sort as for the sorting for the painting itself the sky the red the beiges the green i might try to assemble a bit as i sort i'm not sure how easy or difficult it'll be so we'll see how much i can do but Without further ado, and for the love of puzzles, let's get to work on bag 19, which is section 5, as we travel around art. Peter Bruegel the Elder was the most significant artist of Dutch and Flemish Renaissance painting, a painter and printmaker known for his landscapes and peasant scenes. He was a pioneer in making both types of subject the focus in large paintings. The Tower of Babel was the subject of three of his paintings. The first, a miniature painted on ivory, was painted while Bruegel was in Rome and unfortunately is now lost. The two surviving paintings, often distinguished by the prefix great and little, now this jigsaw puzzle depicts the great Tower of Babel, and that one is actually housed in the Kunst Historisches Museum in Vienna, Austria. It's quite large at approximately 114 by 155 centimeters in dimension. 
Now, the Little Tower of Babel is smaller at approximately 60 by 75 centimeters in dimension, and it is housed in the Museum Boijmans van Buningen in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Sorry, I know I've mispronounced that. Both are oil paintings on wood panels. Now, these two paintings depict the construction of the Tower of Babel, which, according to the book of Genesis in the Bible, was built by a unified monolingual humanity as a mark of their achievement and to prevent them from scattering. In broad terms, both paintings have exactly the same composition, but at a detailed level, everything is different, whether in the architecture of the tower or in the sky and the landscape around the tower. Both towers are shown partly built with stone facings over a massive brick framework, a typical technique in Roman architecture used in the Colosseum and other huge Roman buildings. Grand and formal architecture of this sort is not a usual interest of Brugel in either paintings or drawings, although it was a typical subject matter for many of his contemporaries. The great Tower of Babel version has a group in the foreground with the main figure, presumably Nimrod, who was believed to have ordered the construction of the tower, although the Bible does not actually say this. Bruges' depiction of the architecture of the tower, with its numerous arches and other examples of Roman engineering, is deliberately reminiscent of the Roman Colosseum, which Christians of the time saw as a symbol of both hubris and persecution. The parallel of Rome and Babylon had a particular significance for Bruges' contemporaries. Rome was the eternal city, intended by the Caesars to last forever and its decay and ruin were taken to symbolize the vanity and transience of earthly efforts. The tower was also symbolic of the religious turmoil between the Catholic Church, which at the time conducted all services in Latin, and the polyglot Protestant religion that was increasingly popular in the Netherlands. Although at first glance the tower appears to be a stable series of concentric pillars, Upon closer examination, it is apparent that none of the layers lie at a true horizontal. Rather, the tower is built as an ascending spiral. The workers in the painting have built the arches perpendicular to the slanted ground, thereby making them unstable, and a few arches can already be seen crumbling. The foundation and bottom layers of the tower had not been completed before the higher layers were constructed. The story of the Tower of Babel was interpreted as an example of pride punished, and that is no doubt what Brugel intended his painting to illustrate. Moreover, the hectic activity of the engineers, masons, and workmen points to a second moral, the futility of much human endeavor. Bruges' knowledge of building procedures and techniques is considerable and correct in detail. The skill with which he has shown these activities recalls that of his last commission, left unfinished at his death, was for a series of documentary paintings recording the digging of a canal linking Brussels to Antwerp. What a lovely section to build. I really enjoy the ones that it's just one large beautiful painting. This I would classify as another easy section. It took me 12 hours and 33 minutes, which I didn't feel was that long at all. I love the frame. I'm really getting good at figuring out, you know, the direction of the pieces. And I'll, actually, for a lot of the end part of the video, I wasn't even looking at the image. I just knew where things went. So I really enjoyed this. Now, I thought this section was a bit jinxed. First of all, you're gonna notice during the beginning part of the time lapse, all of a sudden there's a lot of greenery that's done on each side be below the sky of the painting. That's because instead of actually starting the time lapse for 30 minutes, I only took a single photo at the start. I did add in 30 minutes to the overall total time of 12 hours and 33 minutes. 
But yeah, I lost 30 minutes of footage, which is perhaps a good reason that my cameras need to be reset every 30 minutes so I don't lose that much footage. The next thing was I spilt and dropped all the beige background pieces on the floor that I had sorted. I had them like the ones that have a bit of shading, the ones that are completely beige, the ones that have a little bit of frame, all over the floor. Luckily, I didn't lose any, but that was unpleasant. Then, at one point, I was thought that I might be missing a white cloud piece. I didn't freak out right away because I thought, you know what, it's probably in with the beige background pieces that fell all over the floor. And luckily it was, but for a while there, I was a little worried I might be missing a piece, but I wasn't. And the last thing, I actually have my first extra piece. So I have a piece of the sky. This is from the upper right hand corner of sky. So I'm sorry, someone out there with this puzzle, if you are missing a piece of the sky from section five, get a hold of me. We'll figure out if this is the piece you're missing and I'll send it to you. Now this is bag 19, which means I've done 38,000 pieces. In that time, I've missed two pieces and I have one extra piece. That overall is not bad statistically, so I'm, I'm quite pleased. Again, at the end when I'm done the entire jigsaw puzzle, I will let Graphica know. Now I have a few things to talk about. First of all, I reached out again to Dowdle about the 60,000 piece What a Wonderful World puzzle. I know a lot of you have commented either on Facebook, Instagram, or here on YouTube that you've pre-ordered it. But people want to know what's the cut of the puzzle. Because I guess, I don't know if all or a lot of their thousand piece jigsaw puzzles have a random cut. And people were worried that 60,000 pieces, random cut, uh, might be a bit too much to deal with. It's not. Dowdle confirmed to me that it is a standard ribbon cut, just like this travel around art. So all the pieces will line up in nice rows and nice columns. You won't have to be worried about, you know, wonky shapes. So that was really nice of them to let me know. So there you go for your information. Now, finally, I ran into a little bit of a snag with the venue I wanted to hire to use to display the entire jigsaw puzzle. First of all, you're not allowed to mount anything directly on the wall, not even those 3M strips that I wanted to use. And because it really is a venue to display art, it actually has like a little wooden border, a little wooden rail going all around to which you can hook and mount framed pictures. But that causes a bump out from the wall, which would make it difficult for the puzzle to lay flat. And if I want it to mount the puzzle to that, that means the columns of three sections would all have to be kind of affixed to something in the back, maybe like plywood, have some sort of frame, and be able to mount, you know, those nine columns of sections all on that chair, uh, not a chair rail, but a, well, I understand the trail, imagine a chair rail, but higher up for, for artwork, so an artwork rail. And that would add a lot of weight and cost to everything. So that was a bit of a bummer, but then I didn't realize that nice long wall actually has like two bump outs, which makes it not long enough to even fully display the jigsaw puzzle. There is a wall on the other side, but they didn't have the dimensions listed. It does still have that art rail. So I'm thinking it might be a little bit too difficult to go that way. My plan is, I'm going to contact the people that frame this big, beautiful puzzle behind me, get their opinion. Maybe there is an easy way to mount the sections and temporarily display them, or maybe they know of a venue that I could use. I'm also going to reach out to a local art museum. I know they have one room. It was cool. They had this art display and I wish I would remember like the artist and the name you paid like a $2 donation to go in. They gave you a sheet of circle stickers of different colors and the room was literally just all the walls, every surface covered with these circle stickers. You just went in and you put the stickers everywhere. 
That room would be perfect to display this. I'm sure they probably have some other display at the moment, but obviously they're not opposed to putting things directly on the wall. So I'm going to reach out to them and see if there's anything they could do to help me out, even to temporarily display it, or if they know of another venue I could use. Now, my backup, backup kind of plan as a last resort would be there's a, a nice little community hall near to me. Um, I can't use their walls because it's just window, window, window. So there's no place to fully mount it on a wall. I could, however, put out tables, maybe even with boards on the tables to make it more flat and put the jigsaw puzzles on the tables um, all connected and people could just walk around the tables and view the jigsaw puzzle that way or even simpler I could display the jigsaw puzzle all laid out on the floor and people can just walk around the jigsaw puzzle that way I know those aren't the optimal solutions I would love to have it up on the wall and people could stand back and see but I need your opinion if it comes down to it what do you think would be better up on a table or down on the floor. You know, down on the floor has the benefits. You can maybe stand back a bit more and see the overall image, but up on the table, you can get closer. There's probably pros and cons to each one, but what do you think? If I have to resort to either one, leave your comment on a table or on the floor. I'm not gonna let this defeat me though. One way or another, we will display the whole thing together, even if it is on the floor. I still think I'll love it. I still think it'll be beautiful, but I still have what? This was bag 19, so I'm down. I have eight bags to go, so a little bit more time before I gotta sort it out, but I'm working on it. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao!